Welcome tricksters and tricksetters watching this video on the second YouTube channel. Today, your favorite Radiant coach is giving a, his analysis on Outlaw. So, the new gun has been out in the episode 8, Act 1. The new automatic sniper, can we call it like that? Probably, I don't know. So, what is my opinion about this gun? And, uh, you know, what do I think about it? So, I've been coaching players for the four years, I've seen everything in Valorant, all of the updates and bullshit that uh, came into this game. And I must say that I like this update a lot. But a lot. Like, Outlaw is such a refreshing new asset to this game that has a very unique place in the meta, and that's why I like it. First of all, Outlaw deals 140 damage to the body, and it deletes the enemies with a headshot. Now, is that too overpowered for a sniper that costs 2,400 credits? Yes and no. Like, basically, you know, when it comes to the economy, when do you buy the Outlaw? You usually buy the Outlaw, like, uh, when you cannot afford Vandal or Phantom. And what do we have with a Heavy Shield? And what do we have in that price range? In that price range, we have a Bulldog, and we have the Guardian as well. So basically, now you're making a decision. Am I gonna go Outlaw, Guardian, or Bulldog? So first of all, uh, you know, this gun is very unique. And uh, it has a very unique usage as well. Like, basically, if you miss one shot, and you, you don't have a, some kind of a cover, most likely you're going to die. But the main purpose of this gun, as we already know, is to counter the light shield meta. So, these days, you know, if you want to buy a light shield and a vandal, you need to reconsider that option two times. Why? Do enemies have money for the outlaw? Do enemies love playing outlaw on attack and defense? Because if you're playing light shield, I mean, you don't have a heavy shield, against this gun, you're absolutely cocked, essentially. So, you really need to think two steps ahead, whether or not, you know, you can actually afford playing the round with a light shield. I mean, generally speaking, I was always advising the players in rank solo queue, always buy the heavy shield. If you have money for the heavy shield, buy the fucking heavy shield. You're not playing in esports environment, you're not playing in super high radiant lobbies, where everyone is tapping the heads. In this game's game, there's too many abilities that can damage you and kill you. Like, the amount of times where I've survived with less than 25 HP because I had a heavy shield is way too many times. I've conducted a research, I mean research, like I just uh, took the notes of how many times I survived with a heavy shield. And in, in 100 matches, I survived more than 100 times. Trust me, that is 100 deaths less. Yes, you know, if I buy a light shield, I have more money to buy better guns. But anyways, you should learn how to play every gun in this game. And you should become a John Wick of Valorant. Like, basically, I feel with Stinger, I feel as deadly as with a Vandal or Phantom. Maybe even better, to be honest. Like, with a Stinger, I dominate. I shit on the players, basically. Now, <coughs> my apologies, I'm kind of sick. So, uh... What is my general opinion about this gun? Very good gun. Extremely good. In specific case scenarios. Like, for example, you don't have a money to buy a Vandal with a heavy shield, or Phantom with a heavy shield, and you're playing on a defender side. Especially some long-range maps, such as Icebox or Breeze. Outlaw. Plus heavy shield. Plus utility. Problem solved. Like, essentially, with this gun, on a defender side, what's gonna matter a lot is which angles you hold, how well do you position yourself, and essentially, like, uh, angle holding, cross replacement, and, and how you position yourself is gonna be crucial. Crucial to your success with this weapon. But if you master those three things, you're almost always good for one kill. Like, in the last six games, I played Outlaw quite a lot. And I was always good for at least one kill during that specific round when I was playing Outlaw. 
Now, obviously with this weapon, you cannot contest. You cannot contest like, uh, you know, three enemies at once. But if you isolate the enemies in 1v1, 1v1 fights, I don't know what to say. This is an automatic sniper. Like, basically with Outlaw, there is no recoil at all. Like, second bullet always goes back to the center. Dead center. So if one enemy is standing still, and you attack him with the first bullet, just fire the second shot as soon as possible, and that's it. Maybe you can go for the first shot while standing up, second shot crouching down, enemy is deleted. Now, uh, do I think that this weapon is some kind of a nerf or change? I, I don't think so. Uh, basically, 2,400 credits is a lot. But a lot. And obviously, this weapon, very rarely you, you will be able to use on the attacker's side. Like, on the attacker's side, it's, it is a bit of a gamble. You know, it is not a bad idea to force the outlaw if you already know that, uh, like, uh, uh, enemies are very repetitive. Like, for example, you're playing Icebox, and you know for a fact that one enemy always plays up here. You know, holding this angle. You can maybe f force the outlaw. Gladius, thank you all for the sub. Sorry, guys, I, I forgot to turn this off. <laughs> so, what enemy jet always plays up there. You can force up the outlaw, peek, bop, bop, you know, actually that, that's not the outlaw, sorry. <laughs> so you force up the outlaw, you peek, delete that guy. Uh, you know, s sometimes with this gun, you don't need to necessarily aim at the enemy's head. You know, like uh, a lot of times I go for the body shots because uh, people are still following the stupid light shield meta. And whenever I see that enemies don't have enough money, to buy the heavy shield, I primarily aim for the body. But if the enemies are full buy and I know that they have a heavy shield, of course you want to primarily aim for the head and try to delete enemy with a headshot, same as you would do with a with a with a Marshalius Rex. Now, <coughs> when would I buy the outlaw instead of any other weapon essentially? Like when you notice that enemies have a let's say uh you know they don't have a money for the Vendelson heavy shields, they have below 3,800 credits. Why not? You know, you can take the outlaw, take two easy kills onto the enemies and gamble it a bit. I mean, it's not a gamble, this gun is great. Especially, you know, what you should be doing with this gun is combining it with other weapons. Like, for example, outlaw plus chambers headhunter is a deadly combo. Because even if you miss two bullets with the outlaw, I mean, you hit one bullet, and you miss the second bullet. Enemy is dead. Like, with Chamber, this gun goes hard. With Omen as well, because Omen can reach, you know, different elevations, different off-angles with Jet, obviously, with Rays, and those type of characters. Now, uh, this gun is also great uh, for the anti-eco rounds, and bonus round as well. Like, for example, in the second round, if you have money to buy a heavy shield, an outlaw, on a defender's side, why not? You know, on Icebox, on Breeze, on Pearl, Haven, maybe a Scent, Split. You know, it's a viable option. But on some other maps, like, to be honest, like, uh, you know, for Antico rounds, it is much better to go with uh, some other option. Like, for example, I still feel that Stinger on the attacker side of Split is the best anti-eco weapon that you can have in the second round. Uh, on, I don't know, on Bind. In a second round on both attack and defense, Stinger and Judge are still much better options than buying a 2,400 credits like a sniper rifle in a second anti-eco round. Uh, essentially, you know, when you want to use this gun, Depends on your economy, enemy's economy, and which map you're playing. Like, for example, on the Icebox, uh, in Antico rounds and bonus rounds and halberd rounds, this gun is great. On both attack and defense, to be honest. Uh, on Breeze, naturally, because it's a long-range map, it's amazing weapon. Uh, to be honest, like, I don't know why would you buy a 
operate or when this exists on, on Breeze, like it's so fucking good. Because, you know, these two bullets are very, very fast. Very fast. Uh, then, I don't know, which other map we have like right now. On Lotus, for an example, I would prioritize on the attacker side, obviously Stinger, Spectre, Bulldog, Judge. I think they are better weapons. Uh, but on a defender side of Lotus, you know, if you're playing maybe Chamber or Jet, why not? You can go for the Outlaw and try to snipe the enemies in the A main area of the map and uh, uh, C long or B main. Uh, then on Ascent, on the attacker side, you know, I would only buy the Outlaw if I know that enemies are very repetitive. You know, they're picking bottom mid, uh, picking A main, B main, pushing me, pushing me in, into short. Why not? You buy this gun. You're good for one kill. Maybe we can win that uh, that bonus or eco or hull by round. Um, on a defender side of ascent, well, sure, fine. You know, good weapon. Like uh, to be honest, but still, I would prefer you know stinger for anti ecos and and uh, bonus rounds as well. Uh, then uh, uh, we have like uh, which other map is currently active in the competitive queue? Sunset. On the attacker side. I still feel that uh, Stinger, Spectre, Bulldog and Judge are far better, you know, held by an anti-eco weapons. But on a defender side, why not? Like, I mean, if you're playing Chamber, Jet or someone like that, you can pick B main, A main. You can pick like uh, mid area of the map and be good for one kill and get out quickly. Uh, now, <coughs> which other map we have? Uh, so we have Sunset, Bind, Breeze, Ascent. Uh, Icebox, Lotus, and Split, of course. On Split, on the attacker side, as I said, like, uh, I would probably go with a Stinger. Primarily as an anti eco weapon. Uh, because Stinger is amazing gun, to be honest. Uh, and Outlaw, I would probably play on a defender side, because there's a lot of good angles uh, that you can hold and peek. Uh, uh, and do early peeks with the Outlaw, like in A main, B main, and mid area of the map. So this gun is... Amazing. So essentially, you know, it's a situational weapon that is extremely useful if you're tracking the enemy's economy. And uh, essentially, is it broken or not? I don't know. Maybe in a, in a bit lower elo lobbies, like below Immortal 1, where players have a terrible utility usage, uh, terrible smoke placement, flashes, and uh, uh, recon utility. You can probably get away with a lot of kills uh, on 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 defender side and on attack if enemies are pushing you twenty four seven and lurking and flanking. But uh, other than that, I feel that it is well balanced. Two thousand four hundred credits is a lot. Like you just you just don't realize how much money you're actually spending on a weapon like this. Like this this is more of a this is more of a full buy weapon rather than a half buy weapon. Like, this is on a level of Vendel and Phantom. This is not on a level of, I don't know, Marshall, Sheriff, Stinger, Spectre. Like, uh, to be honest, you know, when you're buying the Outlaw, if you want to have Outlaw plus Heavy Shield, or Outlaw plus Light Shield and Utility, you need to invest at least, like, uh, you know, 3,400 to 4,000 credits. For that amount of money, you could have bought Vendel with a Light Shield. You know? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Like, uh, my initial impression is that the gun is very, very fun to use. Extremely fun to use. Like, uh, uh, it's really refreshing. And I really hope that in the future we're gonna get uh, uh, new shotguns as well. New SMGs. Maybe some new pistols. And maybe some other options as well. Because this really feels like a brand new game. With, with this gun. Because it is completely countering the light shield meta, and it's, it's really fun to use, especially if you're playing like a jet uh, chamber. Ch chamber is amazing with this weapon, amazing. Even Killjoy. I played like two games with a Killjoy, I played Outlaw quite a lot, because when Killjoy turrets damages an enemy, it damages the enemy enough to finish him off with one bullet with the Outlaw. Raze Nate, for an example, Raze is amazing with this gun. So, situational weapon, that really uh, depends quite a lot on your uh, crosser placement, angle holding, peaking, and uh, overall positioning and movement on the map. Uh, it doesn't rely too much on your mechanical skill as much as on other aspects of your skill as a player. 
uh, <coughs> sometimes it is better to just dodge it and go with a Stinger, Spectre, some other options. But uh, on some maps, against some enemies, depending on their economy, your economy, this weapon brings a whole new level of gameplay in Valorant. I cannot give you a definitive answer of when to use Outlaw compared to other weapons, because it is impossible to say that. I mean, when enemies, as I said, like, if you think that enemies are only have the light shield, go, go with the Outlaw and take easy kills and win that round easily. And also one more tip that I need to give you is like, uh, when you're playing Outlaw, it is really good to combine this weapon with some other weapon. You know, playing Outlaw plus Shorty. So you have more options to kill the enemies in close range, medium range and long range gunfights. Playing Outlaw and Sheriff, for an example, on long range maps such as Icebox and, uh, and uh, uh, Breeze. Because, you know, when, when, you, when you miss two shots of the Outlaw, the reload time of this weapon is huge. Like, basically, the reload time of Outlaw is insanity. So, you miss two bullets, bap bap. How much is that? 3.8 seconds. You know, like if you miss two bullets, you need some kind of a cover. Or you need to have some secondary weapon to kill the enemies. Like four seconds to reload the weapon, like come on guys. But if you, if you only shoot one bullet and reload, reload time is only around one second. So, maybe, maybe, they should adjust the recoil of this weapon so that the first shot is not dead center. But other than that, I wouldn't change anything in terms of economy, how much this weapon costs. And I wouldn't change anything in terms of anything else. Like, maybe the only overpower thing is this. That the second bullet always goes dead center. Maybe there should be like... A, you know, second bullet in accuracy so that you need to compensate a bit for the recoil, you know, harder recoil, harder punch. But other than that, I feel that any nerf on this weapon, especially damage, would nerf, would completely destroy the point of this gun in the game. That's my two cents. We'll see what happens in the future. And uh, basically we'll see, you know, what, well, what Riot Games is going to decide to do with this weapon. Make sure to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, join my Discord server for coaching, and let's move on to some other analysis, baby. Love you all, guys. Much love. They're so dead. Yes, sir.